picture this. You just finished a label design and your clients absolutely love it. Congratulations. And now you're ready to send it to print. But is that file really print ready? Or maybe you're just getting started in label design and want to learn how to properly submit files. In this video, we're going to go over two different types of labels and I'm going to show you how to prepare and export them for print. Before we get started though, smash the subscribe button, hit that bell, and you'll be the first to know as soon as we upload new videos teaching print design. I'm Gabby from Print Design Academy, where we use 20 years in the print game to teach graphic designers how to be experts in print design. Now let's get started. All right, so I have two labels on the screen here. We're gonna dive into the differences in a minute, but I just wanna highlight the initial things that you need to focus on, clean up, so that the printer knows exactly what you're trying to accomplish with your file. So the four things I would say that I like to keep an eye on, um, layers, we've got the color space and the swatches tidying those up. We wanna take a look at our dye lines and bleeds any call outs and then lastly is text um, so let's get into it all right so let's start with this label here so we're looking at layers first so layers um, this artwork already has some clearly defined layers we know the artworks on this one um, we've got a bleed and a dye line and I just want to point out that um, because this label has some rounded corners we wanted to create our own dye line and so because we're not using the document's natural bleed it's important to create your own bleed so that's why this is this layer is here and this line is here um, but yeah so this this helps this helps the printers understand where the bleed, the dye line are, they can click it on, off, it just helps clearly paint that picture for them. So I'm alright, I'm happy with these layers, let's go take a look at the other one. Alrighty, so we've got all of this artwork and elements on this one layer. Um, that's not going to be really helpful for the printer if they need to get in there and see what's happening. So we're going to clean these up. Um, so we have a few things going on, obviously there's the artwork, and then these two lines here, so we've got our die line where this is going to tell the printers where to cut the label and then we just added an extra thing called the bleed up here um, to give them extra space so that when they cut it there's no overages. So let's create those layers. Um, we've got a layer here so we'll call this artwork. Probably an extra step but that's okay. Die line and bleed. All right, um, yeah, so we've got this layer one here. I'm just gonna grab what I can separate it. So we've got here the bleed. A really handy thing is because I selected this one element, this little blue square, I can actually drag that all the way up to bleed and it will grab that one. And then the dye line, do, 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 do. and then the artwork. It's all there, actually, so let's just retitle that. Artwork. Beauty. All good. Extra layer. Don't need it. Get out of here. Okay. Um, so bleed, dial in artwork. You know what? Just to be extra, extra, I'm going to change this color to something a bit different. There we go. So we can have clear, defined colors. So when you select on things, they're going to be highlighted in that color, keeps it separated, artwork, dye line, bleed. That's looking way better already. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to dive into is the swatches. So let's open up these swatches here. And again, so this is the CMYK artwork. Um, it's very photo-based, obviously. So there isn't a lot of artwork coloring. I can see here there's the yellow and that is already in CMYK so that's great. Let's double check to make sure that the image is also CMYK. If I'm clicking this because the X is through it, you've got the linked file so when I click it I've got it up here. This is telling me that it's CMYK and it's also a great um, PPI here so that's going to print anything over 300 is fantastic. So yeah, these swatches are looking good. The color space is correct. So let's take a look at the Pantone one now. All right, so this artwork is vector-based. So there's gonna be a lot more swatches involved with that. 
Um, so already I can see it's a longer list, but I also see some random colors that aren't used in this file. Um, so the easiest thing right off the bat to clean up your layers, sorry, your swatches, is to use the select all unused from the little hamburger menu. Um, select all unused, I'm going to delete them, and then we're starting to work with the file's actual colors. Okay, so Pantone, remember? Um, so already in here, so these little spot colors, this is the Pantone one. This one random one here is using CMYK, which is not going to print well when you have Pantones. So we're going to correct that. Um, we are going to get the color book for the Pantone Solid Coated. We're going to add that in there, so 311. But yes, do do do. It swatches. That's fine. Okay. All right. So I want to obviously convert all of everything that was this color into the proper Pantone. So a quick way, if you don't know this tool, um, so you select all your artwork. This color re, this recolor artwork wheel at the top. You can click that. It's actually a really handy way of. Um, seeing everything that's going on in your file and you can quickly adjust all of the colors um, if, if you need to convert any color spaces and things like that. So the one we're looking for is this 3115. Um, so I want to change that into, or I can, sorry, document swatches. Here we go. Um, so 3115C. I can click that. We can tell that it's in this CMYK here by clicking the other one. It's going to recolor all of the artwork in that file. Hit OK. Great. It's hard to tell since it's similar color, but if I go to select all unused, that blue is now selected because it's nowhere else in the file, and now I can delete that safely. Sometimes I'll, and I'm going to rename this actually. Double click, that's a word. Okay. Cool, so these are all spot lab. I'll just sometimes, just to triple check, I'll do select all unused again, nothing's highlighted, so that confirms for me that there's nothing random in this swatch as well. So again, this really helps the printers understand what's going on, what inks they need to use, and if there's anything out of place, um, it just may not print properly, and it slows the print process down as well. All right, so that is swatches and color space. So now while we're here, bleed and dye lines. So any of those callouts that the printers need to be aware of, um, we've already put them on their own layers, which is great practice. But another thing that will help them is by um, specifying them even more, shouting out that they're different. So something like CMYK, those inks sort of blend together. Um, so a really cool way of pulling out the artwork or pulling out a color specifically is changing it to a spot color. So by double clicking on the swatch, going into the swatch options, this spot color treats it as its own little entity. Because this artwork is Pantone, I'm good with keeping the color space CMYK and changing it to spot. So by that, having that CMYK color, it indicates to them that it's extra different. So not only have you pulled it out with the spot, you've made it extra different by using a different color ink and space for those. Um, so those are all looking good. We've got our Pantone set, our CMYK. Um, so let's go check the bleed and dye line on the other file. All right, so this is the CMYK file. Um, earlier on, we made, made those layers nice and tidy, but I can tell here that these bleed and dye line colors are going to get really lost into the rest of the CMYK space when the printers open up that PDF file. So to be the opposite, because this CMYK file, we want an ink that's going to stand out, I'm actually going to choose a Pantone color for these, um, just to be extra special. So. Let's go ahead and choose, I guess I could do this. You can either go to the color books and select it, but by changing this to, let's say, lab, um, and again, changing it to a spot color, 
boom. So it's a change the color space. It's called it out specifically. And I'll show you further when we get into the export and the PDF things. It's a little trick to kind of see how this helps the printers in the end. And then the same for the bleeds. So CMYK to lab. And again, we're not trying to match a color. It just needs to be a random color. So I don't need a specific Pantone. This lab and this spot color here. Bam. Extra different. They know that the CMYK they need is this yellow. And our image is obviously correct it correctly with the CMYK. And so we're good to go with swatches there. All right. So next thing on our list is text. So when you're working with something like a label, there's not a lot of text on it, you know it's set in stone. The safest way to keep all your text together and make sure and limit the amount of errors in the print process is to outline that text. So there's a few different ways. Um, obviously we're on the artwork layer. You can actually go select object, all text objects, um, and that will highlight those specifically. And then you can go to type and create outlines. I'm a shortcut person, so shift command O, um, but in the menu it's type, create outlines. That's gonna lock in those file layers so that they are shapes, um, just in case the printer opens up the file and they don't have that font or it wasn't supplied. Um, it's not gonna try and choose a random font or things like that. So it locks it down um, way cleaner on the printer's end. Right, so we've got our outline text there. Head over to the Pantone one. Looks like these guys already have that outline. So again, and this one even has more text than the other labels. So I really wanna make sure that that's staying in place and not changing. Okay, so that are all of the main concepts. So I think we've got a really nice clean files on both ends here. So we're gonna start talking about export. When exporting, there's two different ways to go about it with these types of files. So there's the PDF. Um, we're going to do an illustrator friendly PDF so the printers can just open that up and work from that. Um, and another version is to actually package the file. So that works best when you have different links or live fonts or anything like that. Um, because this particular artwork we're looking at right now is all vector based um, and our PDF is going to be accessible with Illustrator. We just need the PDF. So I'm going to go file, save as, or ship command S or whatever you want to do there. Um, and then we're going to save it as a PDF. We're going to hit in the save. Now I'm going to use high quality print. Um, this allows the most general file type um, it doesn't convert it colors in a certain way or anything like that. That's probably the best go-to. If a printer obviously asks you for a different PDF type, listen to your printer. But high quality print, general, good to go. And we are making sure that this Illustrator editing capabilities is checked on, just in case. Um, compression, maximum, maximum. Um, we don't want any compression on our images. Even though it's vector, we're good. Marks and bleeds, now this file and the other one, um, because we're not using the document's actual bleed settings, because we created our own die line and bleed, we don't need this screen, but definitely on things with bleed, etc., you need this. We don't need this for this label here. Output, advanced, just kind of click through them, but everything should be good there. And now we're gonna hit save. Sweet, so we've saved this PDF, um, and we'll take a look at that deeper in after we go to the next one. So same thing, so file save as, we're saving to the desktop, all good, and we are making sure that it is a PDF. Save, high quality print, yes, it'll probably default to this, but you really want the high quality print. Illustrator capabilities available, don't need any compression on this. Marks and bleeds, again, don't need it for this particular design because we've created our own. And the rest is looking all right to me. So I'm gonna save that PDF there. Um, and because of this linked file, um, this image, might as well, I'm gonna do a file package, saving it to the desktop, everything on. If you had a different label where you didn't wanna outline the fonts or something, who knows? You know, you do, this'll keep all of it in one file so that they can access it later. All right, so there's our package. So it's got a little links folder with 
the image and then it has a quick little report in terms of the colors and fonts and blah 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 and then a little quick and easy preview PDF for them. Um, yeah, so that is exporting. So we're going to take a look at the files in depth using Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat, and I can show you a few tricks that really verify that you've exported them properly. All right, so I'm going to minimize this file here. We're going to open up our PDFs. Awesome. So, um, sure, let's start with this one. So remember, this is the CMYK file. A really handy feature built into Acrobat Pro is this print production. Um, so you can actually go into the output preview. And again, so this is the CMYK. So anything that's cyan, um, it actually is going to show you the separations of the inks here. So I can toggle on my cyan, magenta, and yellow. And the, again, the reason why, remember we took those bot colors for our bleed and dye line is because they pull them out here like this. So I can actually just turn off the bleed and the dye line. And if they weren't set in that spot, they would have just been melded in together with the other CMYK. Um, and that just doesn't help them pull out in this sort of view like this. Great, so we're going to look at the Pantone one now. Again, same thing. So we've got our all of our Pantone colors specifically because Pantone is the way that it is. Obviously, there's those specific inks, so they are a lot more easy to see here. And then with our bleed and dye line, those are actually going to go into these process plates. So the CMYK. Um, which it just indicates to the printer, hey, these are different inks. I know that this file is Pantone. Why is the CMYK here? And that will just kind of clue into them that, okay, there's something different. What do I need to see? And it's the dye line and bleed, which is really great in terms of keeping a flow and getting the printer to see exactly what you're doing with your files. And that's exporting and preparing and getting these labels ready for print. And that's how it's done, my friends. Now, if you're interested in learning even more about label design, including some advanced techniques that are really gonna help your design jump off the shelf, the Craft Beer Label Design course is for you. And you can check it out in the link in the description. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out this next video where we talk about awesome label designs and how they're made. See you next time.